knows a lot about all kinds of stuff, Professor Dave explains. If an American wants to buy a vacuum cleaner in China, they will need to exchange their American dollars for Chinese yuan. Most countries have different currencies, and these currencies are competing with one another. For example, the difference between a Canadian dollar and a Japanese yen does not stay the same from day to day. These fluctuations can have a big impact on imports and exports, and can make international trade even more complicated. In this tutorial, we will look at the effects of changes in exchange rates on world trade. First of all, the value of a country's currency in relation to a foreign currency is called the exchange rate. If you understand exchange rates, you can convert prices in one currency to prices in another currency. Exchange rates change daily, but these days they are easy to keep track of. A currency's value goes up or down in relation to other currencies. An increase in the value of currency is called appreciation, and a decrease in its value is called depreciation. If the exchange rate between the Canadian dollar and the Japanese yen increases from 100 yen per dollar to 120 yen per dollar, each dollar can buy more yen. Because the dollar has increased in value, it has appreciated against the yen. This appreciation means that people in Japan will have to spend more yen to purchase a dollar's worth of goods from Canada. When a country's currency depreciates, its goods become cheaper to other countries, which usually means they export more stuff. Now suppose a company in Canada sells oil in Japan. That company is paid in yen, but back in Canada it has to pay its workers and suppliers in dollars. Therefore, the company has to exchange its yen for Canadian dollars. This exchange takes place on the foreign exchange market, which is made up of around 2,000 banks and other financial institutions that facilitate the buying and selling of foreign currencies. There are two main ways governments adjust the value of their country's currency. A system in which governments try to keep the values of their currencies constant with respect to one another is called a fixed exchange rate system. In a fixed exchange rate system, countries typically fix or peg their exchange rates to one country with a strong stable currency. At the end of World War II, representatives of 44 countries met in the United States, specifically Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. Their goal was economic stability for the post-war world. At what became known as the Bretton Woods Conference, the representatives agreed to peg their currencies to the United States dollar, since they thought the United States had the strongest economy in the world, and therefore the most stable currency. To carry this out, conference participants created the International Monetary Fund, or IMF. Today, the IMF still promotes currency stabilization and monetary cooperation. The second way governments adjust the values of their country's currencies to other countries' currencies is a flexible exchange system. In this system, the exchange rate is determined by supply and demand, rather than according to any preset range. When the current flexible exchange rate system was first adopted, some economists worried that changes in the exchange rate might interfere with the flow of world trade. However, trade has actually grown quickly since the flexible exchange rate system was adopted. Today, most countries use a mixture of fixed and flexible exchange rates to account for the day-to-day -day changes in currency values. Because the value of a country's currency is affected by the overall flow of goods and services into and out of a country, exchange rates often affect a country's balance of trade, which is the relationship between the value of its exports and the value of its imports. If a country exports more goods and services than it imports, it has a trade surplus. If a country imports more goods and services than it exports, it has a trade deficit. Trade surpluses and trade deficits are not inherently bad. However, generally countries strive for some sort of trade balance in order to protect the value of their currencies. In other words, they hope the value of imports is approximately equal to the value of exports. If a country does have a trade deficit, its government can try to restore trade balance in two main ways. First, it can attempt to depreciate the exchange rate of its currency. Second, it can attempt to cut back spending by adjusting its monetary or fiscal policy. In conclusion, as long as there is international trade, countries will constantly have to manage how their currencies exchange with other currencies. The easier it is to manage, the more the world economy will thrive. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Yeah.